Hello, this is David Olani Peckham, the host and creator of Let's Talk Creatives, a podcast talk show set up to engage with the creative community across the globe. And today's special guest is Ken Wadibu. He's a conceptual artist based in Nigeria. To, to, to what conversation? Um, uh, Kerry James Marshall. You're inspired by Kerry James Marshall. And then, yeah, we'll take it up from there. Yeah, so I'm inspired by Kerry James Marshall, Tim uh, Vitola, um, um, uh, this lady, Jordan Pastel. She's been bought her piece, so I was like, nah, she's got to be doing something great. And all of them has, have, they have this you know, recurring narrative of representing black people, you know, completely yeah. different way that nobody has seen before. Mm. Mrs. Marshall exaggerates his blackness. Uh, uh, Tony Stoller creates an energy to her blackness. Uh, Jalen Castell creates color to her blackness. And we, yeah. and then, you know what, well, let me take out that blackness and create consciousness of every black person. So it's an investigation for myself, or you know, to try and understand, you know, how conscious, you know, we are as black people, and represent an inner person than the outer person. So it's like, it's, you know, from the fact that I'm a civil engineer, we are more concerned with what's inside than outside, the structure inside. How many people can stay inside this building and the building will not collapse? What are the structures that are going to be here? What are the things that are going to be here? The load capacity, right? I'm not worried about the outside, the outside of the architect, right? So I think that sort of like builds my own understanding of even human beings. I don't necessarily see how beautiful you are or how handsome you are. I see through that, through all that, to understand who are you as a person. Mm. Try to put that in my works. So, so, my, my, so the, the idea of this whole um, uh, 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 movement of hyperrealism in Nigeria started from Artist Connect. So, yeah. in Artist Connect, I, uh, I and uh, my, one of my collectors and patron, right, decided, you know, this one saw one of the biggest, one of the largest artist gallery in Nigeria to date, mm-hmm. right? We talked about young artists, I mean. So it featured over 300 artists just coming together with their work. Some people travel, all traveling from US, crazy. But wow. their work, I'm telling you, we thought about this on Monday. The show was meant to be on Saturday. Wow. We put up on Tuesday, we just picked like 10 to 15 people. I had a follow day, it's a friend of mine. We picked like 10 to 15 artists. Mm-hmm. Then we started getting. DMs, DMs, emails, emails, one of the part, one of the part, one of the part, and I'm like, okay, it's free for all, gate me, a thousand there. And we had over, we had more than 300 people wanting to come. We had over like 800 to 1,000 people sending us emails. Well, you know, a lot, just 300 paid, and they were allowed inside. So we had this huge gathering of 300 people. Mm. And, you know, and this collector was like, you know what, Ken, let's, let me do a solo show for you. Let me sponsor one of your solo shows. Because it was back in Quest. And I'm like, you know what, it's a good show instead. So I am, uh, that my friend Falah David, he's an artist. And we mm-hmm. said, eight different artists, because two of us making ten. Hyper-realists that are going to, like, blow the gallery up. So we put, like, people like Arinze Stanley, Oscar Ukon, Alex, uh, Peter, Lots of lots of amazing hyperrealists, and then we did yeah. like this beautiful exhibition in America Gallery. Our people came. Oh my God, you love this! People came, and they looked at it like, "Oh, amazing photograph!" And they were going, <laughs> like, "Yo, we were done with pencil," and they go, "Whoa, no way!" Like, uh... this was packed with. I think it's one of the. I think it's the most uh, most attended exhibition in. Make a gallery if they wanted to be honest, yeah, because it was crazy. So, I think that sort of started this idea of hyper realism in Nigeria, yeah. But you know, at that time, we did it for fun, we, we, didn't, we didn't understand how to create. I, I, I understood how to, but we were creating narratives, but we were more concerned with the kind of 
realism, with how good or how realistic, rather than how deep is the narrative. Yeah. Right? So it got to a point where in my life where I figured out that people kept, when you say you are hyper realist, people don't even bother about checking what kind of narrative you are trying to express, what kind of thing you are trying to express. They just go, oh, it looks like a picture, amazing. Right? Nobody wants to understand the narrative or deeper conversation that my works brought. That said, to turn my works contemporary realism. Sort of like bringing myself away from that stereotype. Mm. Right? And also encouraging other young people that, you know what, instead of just doing complete hyper realism, we can add other elements that hyper realism will not make you, will not want, let you add. Mm. You know, you can't paint on your canvas because I'm trying to talk about violence or a narrative or you can do certain things, collage and certain things like that, the hyperrealism will not give you that opportunity to add. So mm -hmm. it, a lot of people, a lot of young artists, they're following this idea of contemporary realism, which is pretty much very interesting. And then that's, that's what the, my whole style and idea works. Uh, it's, it, it, no, it's dope, it's dope. Yeah, boys, I wondered like, oh, you know, where are these hyper-realist artists coming from in Nigeria? You know, it's like, there's so many of them and they're all so talented. It's insane. <laughs> like, there they are loads, like, and you see that, you see Kevin Okafor, uh, not Kevin Okafor, sorry, you see um, Kevin Hart, you saw the Kevin Hart thing, you saw this, uh, uh, Steve, uh, this, uh, this man who does this show, this old black man. Steve Harvey? Yeah, Steve Harvey. So yeah. all these people, they, 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 uh, they commented on certain Nigerian hyper-realists. Somebody drew him out and he was like, you know what, I love this world, I'll buy it from you, do it five of my best. The person came out of BBC, CNN, Steve Harvey, the same thing, I love this world, do it extra, you know, came out. So a lot of people say, you know, the you know, I did Bonaboy's album cover, this one did work for this, somebody's doing work to Swiss Beats, you know, everything is just bubbling, and, you know, everybody's there, yeah. you know, being part of yeah. the movement. But the art world founds are the movement, so it's, I, I understand why, is because when you bring something like that, hyperism can be thought, I can teach you how to draw a face, but I can never teach you how to create art. Yes. That's, yes. that's the point. So that's why we found that it. Because hyperrealism is not, as an artist, it's not how good you can draw, but it's the kind of narrative and the kind of express, what you're trying to express as yeah. art. So, yeah, so that was. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to keep on going back to the 1609 door piece um, with your latest series. Seriously, that's the idea. It's a, like that you've just created a movie. As far as I'm concerned, you created a small <laughs> film. That's like when you're explaining the concept of the brown door within the new series, it's like a movie. You know, you got a door that shows you, okay, prior to slavery, we had this, this, and this. Here's the key to the floor. And like you got the person, the figure there, the woman, you're looking into her soul. And, if, and like, is she going to pick up the key? Is she too scared to pick yeah. up the key? Is she she's scared and to go on to the unknown. It's an interesting, yeah. Like, Seriously, it's a powerful message. It's a powerful message. It's a powerful story. Literally, it's like when you were describing the idea of the brown door, the skin, the soul behind the girl, the key on the door. I saw a movie. I was looking at. I was what my brain was like watching a movie. I was like watching a movie in my brain. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just my imagination, but I was literally watching, oh, this is a good film. I'm watching, you know, just from the idea. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, no, it's super powerful, man. Super powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I, your, yeah, your work is amazing, bro. You know what I mean? Your work is sick, man. It's sick. It's sick. Um, anyway, yeah, so what else are you working on now? Are you, work, are you still going to carry on with this, um, the current series? Yeah, yeah, I carry on with that series. Uh, yeah. I, I still trying to experiment on uh, on uh, masks, but yeah. I, I don't think um, yet. Yeah, um, I, I don't think I've got it yet. These are like experiments. Yeah. 
I've been doing a mask. I've been doing a, let me show you this one. I've been doing like a couple of sketches. Sorry. Of uh, hat figures. Yeah. You know, trying to represent, you know, the, that consciousness. So yeah. it's beautiful for me. And you have this work called Let's yeah. Play. It's like yeah. a checkboard. And mm. each of the pieces mm. are like chess pieces, but they are like drawings of my eyes. Yeah. Yeah, I just do them. So I'm just like, for me, it's just a couple of experiments trying to figure out exactly what I can say and what I can create. But most especially, that package is in brown skin. It's something I want to tackle deeply. I want to go into deeper narratives with it. I want yeah. to go into stronger narratives. I want you to touch yeah. people as much as I want you know, to create good art. So, yeah, yeah. No, your work definitely it sparks the imagination. It makes people, you know, it makes me think. It makes me think. So very thought-provoking work. Yeah, oh, amazing, amazing. So, um, I asked quite a few people this. Um, so we're currently going through this lockdown. Uh, so is there any like a tips or advice you'll give to anyone that's perhaps struggling through this situation? Uh, we, we survived, we survived, the, we survived worse. We survived, yep. yeah, we survived, we survived, um, uh, World War One. survived. Yeah. <laughs> Two, we survived slavery, we survived colonization, we survived, uh, we survived malaria, we survived, we're still surviving malaria, we survived, uh, uh, you name it, we survived bird flu, we survived uh, this one that looks like, they said it looked like, uh, it looked like COVID. Uh, Spanish flu, survive, yeah. survive a lot of things. So definitely yeah. we'll survive this one. We are human. You can't just kill us like that. It's not possible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's tractable. We are like, no matter how much, how worse the world is, as far as you still have two people who will come together to stand mm. that's what matters the most. Uh, you know, for me, I feel. You know, to survive something like this, you need to be aware of what's going on. Mm -hmm. But don't don't let it consume you. For me, I I used to I used to check my phone to see news, but after checking my phone to see the news, I blank up my phone and go offline and I put in my earpiece and I'm listening to something I'm working. Mm -hmm. Because in as much as these things tell you what to do, they can depress you. But they can let you feel the world probably end. Let me just drop my pencil and sit down. At the time you move it, think of the world will end. Somebody has gone way further than you. So yeah. it's about doing something now. It's about you know surviving. It's about conforming to the change and letting it, don't let it define you, but define it itself. Mm. Define it close to you. Don't let it capture you. Don't let it you know, don't let it break you. Mm. It, it was in this whole situation. And then eventually you, you, I don't know, you probably, you probably survive this one too. And I, I, I want to tell my kids that oh, your dad went through a lot of things. Oh, COVID. I was like, everybody was like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you know, it's like an action movie. You want to tell your kids, and it's interesting. It's fun. So we survive this. I'm very sure we'll have good stories. Yeah. I can't wait for. I'll come out, you know, maybe John Chabuta will probably add that word or some, somewhere, right, about COVID-19 and all yeah. this thing, yeah. 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 I, I was in Contagia uh, last two weeks, mm. and it's not exactly like COVID-19, there was no the difference, so she decided this, that there is, it was, if we can survive this, it would be a very, it be a very good, and come on, actually, I, my life would be a movie one day, because COVID-19 is going to be part of my life. <laughs> yeah. Telling you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah, man. No, no, yeah, very thought-provoking work here. Very powerful. Powerful. You're, you're making a point to make, create, like, powerful 
imagery, powerful arts of work, you know. Uh, so yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, we've covered a lot <laughs> uh, through the <this> Skype. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, so um, uh, any last messages to anyone that's following you or anyone that wants to keep in touch with you or like, you know, learn more about you? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually having a, a show with one of the four. I was meant to be in New York um, this season for one of the four arts fair. Mm. Sad with COVID. So it's all online on Artsy. So I'm having a show with one of the four. Sixth of May to, I think, 31st of May. Yeah. Of May, I'm not sure. Then uh, I hope to be having a couple of shows. I, I, hope, I hope to meet you. I actually want to be in a residency. A residency program, so I hope that works out. But yeah, you know, you can, you can, you know, they can see me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, mm. my website. My website is always updated, I'm always updating my website every day. Um, to you know, we, you know put, put it up to date on certain things that go uh, happen in the world in my life, and uh, you know, art is everything for me. It's what I do again. I became a professional artist once I left civil engineering. I stopped every other thing to become an artist. Everything I do, like video directing, these, that, they are all like just for the side to help a friend or this friend or that friend. And because I, I like the fun, it's fun for me. Mm. I like to do new things, it's very creativity. So, you know, everything about me is art. So, I don't think there's any. There's any more artistic person. You <laughs> want to talk about that, me? So I'm, I'm really much out of myself. Well, my dread is art. So. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, very uh, Basquiat. <laughs> I know you're a fan of Basquiat, man. I know you're a fan, man. Ganga, man. I know you're a big fan. I know you're a big fan. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, Basquiat picks out the block, the ice block from cups. Of the liquid, so when I saw it, I was like, Oh no, don't tell me you do this now nah. because I love licking the ice block. <laughs> uh, I, I was then, I, I then dread the dreads came from representation, mm. it, it didn't just come because uh, when I was young, I had dread before, cut it out, cut it out, maybe to a smart boy. But then at a point, I figured out that I needed that representation, I needed that black representation, mm. right. You know, I wanted, even not for myself, but for people who I was going to meet. But I, I, I knew I was not going to be in Nigeria all through. I knew I was going to you know, connect to the world. And I needed that representation, that African giant sort of form of representation. So that's what the journey came about. Yeah. So everything in my life is sort of like weirdly intentional you know, to get me to a certain goal or a certain you know, focus in life. Yeah, well, Ken, I appreciate your time. Thank you, mate. No, it's been really good conversation. Really, really good. Really good. And um, yeah, so I'll just say, yeah, so thanks again. And um, say, take care. Yeah, you too. Yeah, stay safe. And uh, yeah, we'll talk soon. Yeah, you too, mate. Thank you. All right, All right take care, yeah? All right, cheers. Cheers. Bye.